iFixit. If you're not familiar with us, we're online at iFixit.com. Uh, we're a free online repair manual for basically everything we can manage, um, but we also rely on users and students and tons of people who submit their own work uh, to help the next people down the line. So if you've ever broken your dishwasher trying to take it apart, like help the next guy out and take some pictures along the way. Uh, right now we're doing a teardown. We commonly do teardowns to have a first look inside the device uh, to show people what kind of chips are in there, what kind of technology is happening, uh, and also to assign a repairability score. Uh, we are very passionate about repair in our business uh, because we believe that everyone should have the right to repair their own things and that manufacturers shouldn't lock people out and that they should provide replacement parts so that we can keep devices going instead of throwing them away in the landfill, contributing to e-waste um, and just the throwaway culture that we've kind of ended up with. So right now, Andrew is going to take apart a hoverboard here. Hi. Yeah, hi guys, I'm Andrew. I'm a teardown engineer at iFixit. Also, Sam, did you introduce yourself? Oh, I'm Sam. This is the most important part. <laughs> uh, I'm Sam. I work at iFixit. I take a lot of the photos that we do in uh, the teardowns and mm -hmm. the repair guides. And this is Andrew. Yeah, and we've already taken down a hoverboard. Uh, that was a specifically a Swagway. There's not very much difference between the different hoverboards, uh, but this was one that we thought was pretty cool. So we're going to be sort of coincidentally showing you that teardown that we've already published just because it'll get you a closer look at some of the components that are going to be largely the same in this very different black hoverboard instead of the gold hoverboard. Sorry, the gold hoverboard. But that has some close-up photos already, so those of you in the back should be able to get a look at the monitors and see what's going on here. Very similar on the inside. So I'm going to start. First off, these things are really heavy, if you've ever picked one up. They're full of batteries, they're full of super heavy hub motors. Um, they're kind of scary, I don't like them. But you know, a lot of people do and they're fun to ride probably. So I've already pre-gamed a little bit and taken out a bunch of the screws so you're not all watching me just like work on my biceps up here. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take out the few remaining screws. These are like Phillips number two, super easy, super handy screws. We always pay attention to how things are put together while we're taking them apart at iFixit because we care about repairability so much. So, you know, a number two screwdriver is a plus. That's super easy. Everyone has that in the kitchen drawer. Yeah, really common, really handy. This means that, like, basically anyone can break into one of these guys. So if your hoverboard starts acting weird, like, okay, open it up and see what's inside. Um, screws like Apple's Penelope screw. If you guys have an, uh, an iPhone, if you look at the bottom, weird five-pointed screw. Um, they're actually terrible screws. So the only reason Apple actually use them is to keep you out. Uh, they strip really easily and you can like only take those screws out like three or four times before it's just like completely unusable. Um, so seeing a nice Phillips screw, really cool. It's also probably really cheap uh, compared to like the extreme manufacturing that goes into Apple's Penelope's. Uh, as a quick note while Andrew's taking out the, those last screws, we've got some stickers here under the bottom of the Swagway, which is a previous teardown uh, we did. Uh, this swagway, this hoverboard, has absolutely no stickers or markings or certifications of any kind. Um, so the swagway is kind of like, okay, we're the safe hoverboard because like our charger is UL certified. Um, this one is pretty much like black box. You have no idea who manufactured it. I don't even know what it's called. There's no name anywhere on it. So it's just a hoverboard. It's a we'll hoverboard. See All right. Inside. I'm going to interrupt you. I got this panel off. And in here is a cool little feature that has very little to do with hovering. Uh, but this is a Bluetooth SOC right here with a little Bluetooth antenna and some audio driver equipment and a little speaker. So you can sync this up to your iPhone and play your tunes while you're scooting down the street. And then it just receives 24 volts off the main battery just because. So that's in there. You'll notice that there's speaker grills here on the other side for your stereo sound, but um, they forgot the second speaker. <laughs> but, you know, they tried. It, it looks symmetrical, though. Yeah, so, so there's like, probably two speakers in there <laughs> until you open it and find out that there aren't. Really quick, before I start taking too many things out, I'll give you an overview. This is a super cool, like, this is basically the invention that makes this happen, is this is the hinge that lets you uh, rock the two pads independently. And then the way that this works is there's a big old motor inside each of these wheels, hub motor, and there's a little gyroscope board on each side. And so whenever any of these sides is anything but level, it's gonna give it power one way or the other to try and level it. So this is like Segway, but tiny and independent to each wheel, which is pretty rad. Um, we've got our battery right here, which is often the source of the issue with these things, is 
Sometimes you don't get a really nice manufacturer on these batteries and you get like metal filings in during manufacture or poor spot welds or punctures and then they light on fire on airplanes and that's bad. And then balance on the other side is, this is like your power distribution board. There's a ton of MOSFETs around here uh, making up, I think it's, we figured this out, like a set of six half H bridges, which is what's used, um, three of those to power each motor, which let you spin each motor in each direction. Putting quite a bit of power through, this is a 24 volt lithium polymer battery. And so all the power comes across to this side and then it gets distributed based on the gyroscopic needs of each wheel, which is cool. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I go any further is disconnect the battery because I don't want to be electrocuted. So now all the power is here and except for what's left in these capacitors, it's mostly safe. And I'm gonna go ahead and start taking something else apart. Kind of one of our least favorite things to find in teardowns is like these really weird cables that are connecting two components. Like when you're opening up a display or something and you've got like 12 random cables that are connecting it back to the motherboard and you're like, okay, cool, I have it open, but not really. Yeah, I wish um, I could get this off, but it's, oh, actually this one can come off. I'll get rid of this guy here for you. Yeah, there's, is that the one that's like threaded through? No, nah, this yeah. one can just come off. All right. So this cable here is actually your charge port. And that goes straight into your motor driver board, which then actually sends it back to the battery, and then it comes back. So this guy's all separated now. Also, when we're done, you guys can definitely come up and get a close look. Sorry if it's hard to see from far away. Uh, okay, and now I'm disconnecting things off this gyro board. So this connector here comes straight from this like main motor driver board, or actually goes to it, and that's how the gyro board tells the power distribution board, hey, it's time to power this wheel this way or this way. Also plugged into this, for some reason, is power for some LED lights that go on the side, I guess to look really cool. So that comes off of this board as well. And the now cables I'm gonna run along the top of the fender on the inside. There's like maybe a quarter inch of clearance between that and the rubber of the wheel. So the, the rubber is solid, so you're not gonna get a lot of bouncing probably when mm -hmm. you're going over things, but it seems like a strange place for some wiring to run. What are we taking off at this point? We're getting the gyro board off. Did I put that on? Yes, I did. All right. So on here, we've got an ST, uh, let's see, it's an ST Microelectronics 32-bit microcontroller right here running this little mini board. And then this guy is a gyroscope, and I don't remember what it is specifically, and my eyes are not good enough to read it off. In here is kind of cool. There are a couple of photo gates that live on the bottom of this board, and then there are these Membranes, yeah, we have a good close-up picture up there. So when your foot presses on the foot pedal here, it pushes this rubber membrane up, which pushes a little rubber tab to block that photo gate. In all the YouTube teardowns of this device, people say, oh, that's how it can tell if you want to go forward or back, because you're pushing forward or you're pushing back, and it's triggering this magical switch, and you're going forward or back. But that's not true at all. This is just so that if you fall off, it knows and it stops moving. This is a dead man switch if you're on the board. If you're on it at all, you're gonna push these, block these photo gates, and it'll register that. The actual smarts for figuring out how to power each motor come from the gyroscope, which is on this board. So uh. again, the teardown we have online isn't quite the same model, but it's got a lot better uh, chip identification, and we go a little bit more in depth. Um, as with all of our teardowns, we try and do our best to identify uh, chips on there. If you guys know chips that we don't know, you should definitely go on there and suggest to us, and then we can mark those up for you. And actually, all of our teardowns, all of our content on ifixit.com is user editable. So you can click the little edit button next to any step on any teardown and make the change. If it's a big uh, ifixit made teardown, then it'll have to go through an approval process, but we'll check it out, and if it's true, then You'll be famous, you'll be part of the guide. Yeah, we uh, try to credit every author on a teardown, or, or on any guide. Um, when it gets down to like hundreds of contributors, I think we have to cut it off at like certain numbers of points, but you get points for contributing, so you should definitely try it. So now just for fun, I took out the other gyro board, it's the exact same thing, but on the other side. Um, in fact, it's like the exact, oh, except for this one, lead where it looks like on this side they forgot a trace because there's I don't I don't know what that is <laughs> that might be an antenna I don't I don't know what that's there for that's cool uh, and right now my goal is the battery I'm gonna get this out it's got a little plastic cage holding it down we 
with a few screws. So again, I don't know if you guys have seen all the, the, oh, these things are super dangerous and they catch fire and stuff. Oftentimes that happens when charging, um, but sometimes it's just spontaneously as you're, you're driving down the road. Um, so we'll see if we can open the battery pack. Um, yeah. But pretty often they're unmarked battery cells where like if you know the, the model number, you might be able to tell, okay, this is an LG battery versus uh, something else. Um, so we'll see if we got any luck with this one. Uh, we ended up with LG batteries on the Swagway. So there's a little bit of foam tape on the bottom and the battery pack is out. And it is made in China. All right, it says Samsung on here. So that's either Samsung or counterfeit Samsung. <laughs> one or the other. Uh, if it's Samsung, then it's good. Then they make really great batteries and they're high quality and this probably won't explode. I'm not an expert to tell. Some people are. Uh, but here's the battery pack. Do you want to cut it open and see what's inside? See if we can avoid blowing ourselves up. There you go. So there's going to be a uh, charging uh, control board in there. And basically it's a ton of those, what is it, 16,500 lithium, lithium ion uh, polymer cells that are in absolutely everything. Uh, most commonly vaporizers, so if you search for that battery cell, you're gonna get all the vaping sites, like for which cell is the best for that. Yeah, uh, the other battery pack we had was labeled Chili Car battery, mm -hmm. um, which we think is some kind of, like a scooter, some kind of scooter. Uh, this one is unlabeled, or unspecified as far as what the battery pack would be for. Now, I'm right now disconnecting the three phases of our three-phase brushless DC motor. And should be able to get one of these wheels off. Getting an actual look inside the hub is pretty difficult, but we might try. It's got some really tight screws, and then you're kind of moving bearings around. And I didn't bring a gear puller. So these big old hefty Allen key screws are usually thread locked. These aren't. Um, and they hold on this hub, which is actually some nice beefy machining there, which lets this guy come out. And these are all the same wheel or motor in all of these devices. I guess some have bigger wheels, so they're probably a little different. We can go ahead and try these screws and see what happens. Because it is pretty cool to see the motor controller inside. So the individual batteries are labeled Samsung, so that's at least consistent labeling. We've got tons of tape here. Should have brought my power screwdriver. Oh yeah, that's fun. Oh, look at all those leads. <laughs> so this, uh, charging control board that's kind of piggybacked on the side of the pack here is basically responsible for trying to establish an even charge across all of the cells. Um, with all of these cells in series, which is how you get up to 24 volts, basically the weakest link is gonna set the capacity for the entire pack. So if you've got a miss, not an evenly charged pack, then your total capacity is gonna suffer. Okay, I don't think we're gonna actually get this open. Yeah, this one was really intense last time. It's, it's pretty tightly wedged in there. Yeah. I'll give you guys a sneak preview. Yeah, if I can't get it, we'll have to be satisfied with the pictures. So here is the, the battery board previously. Uh, we found some fun uh, mismatched wiring uh, in the previous board. This one was like actually properly color coded, which is really cool. So spoiler alert. But this is what Andrew's trying to do is there we go. pop that open. Ooh, nice. Oh, and then this guy you have to turn sideways to get through. There we go. All right, so there's a bearing in here that fits onto this shaft right here. I'm getting kind of dirty. 
And then in here are all of the coils, and on this little board here are a few Hall effect sensors that, or, or leads to a few Hall effect sensors in the periphery of the coils here, which is how this is able to keep track of where it is in the cycle, and that's how the, basically how that three-phase motor works. You should look it up on Wikipedia if you don't know how it works. Uh, all right, last thing that's still in here is this main motor driver board. So I'm gonna get that out, and then I think we'll probably open it to questions. So just a few screws on this guy, but then also it has all of the wires still on it, because this is kind of the main board of the device. And in our teardown, we've got all sorts of chips and components marked up on it. We've also got a teardown of the charger. Um, the Swagway charger was actually UL certified, and it actually looked pretty good. Um, inside, we got a power supply kind of expert uh, to take a look at it and talk to us about it. Um, so we've got some more information on that. Uh, the one that came with this one was not labeled as UL certified, and it's pretty light, so probably not as nice inside. Um, but you can check that out. I need some cutter. So a lot of what we do is like tearing into these devices and when it's the first form factor or a new form factor of something we've never torn apart, um, like the Apple Watch or uh, like the iPad mini is very different from like an iPhone or whatever. Um, it's a lot of exploration and kind of trial and error. Um, and the, the good thing about that process is we, we take photos for everything and we document everything. So most of it goes back together. Um, that's one of our like big questions is like, okay, you tear it down, but when does it go back together? Um, so hopefully this guy will go back together. Uh, we did reassemble the other uh, hoverboard and it functioned normally. And then it got torn down several more times at conventions like this. So not quite sure if that's still around. Yeah, I think it developed a quirk of really liking to throw you off after about a minute of normal use. It got kind of stuttery. Yeah, it was like, roll, 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 and then it turned into like a bucking bronco under your feet where it would oscillate and go like one after the other, and you're like, okay, never mind, I'll get off. So the cool thing about this hinge that I sort of started talking about earlier is that all of these cableage, all this cableage passes right through this hole, um, and there's nice like soft chamfered edges, so hopefully it's not gonna cut through anything, wear through them, and then also anything that passes through, most anything that passes through has got some nice uh, like shrink wrap insulation on it. All right, so I have this, like, I don't know, like I caught a fish or something. This is out. Uh, the big thing about this board is that it's got soldered on, like, direct leads for powering both of the motors. So this motor comes off of this side, and then this one goes through this long cable for the other side. Uh, tons of big heavy-duty MOSFETs around the edges, all screwed onto this aluminum plate that works as a heat sink and also to sort of help stabilize the entire board and keep it nice and flat so maybe you can use a little bit cheaper solder joints, who knows. Uh, a few capacitors, I believe there are some big huge resistors on here that are used for current sensing, so that's a stall detection. Uh, if you're overcurrent to one of your motors, it'll cut that off, which is kind of a cool feature. The really interesting thing is that no one really knows who designed this board, everyone copied it from somebody else, and they all look exactly the same. And they're really nice. It's like there's quite a bit of design in, that went into it. There's a little LED on here that will blink with a diagnostic pattern based on problems that it's detecting. So it's got some pretty cool firmware. But there are 100 factories making these. They all look about the same on the outside and use pretty much the exact same components on the inside. So. Yeah, honestly, if this thing did a little more hovering and a little less just rolling on the ground, it's like, okay, it came from the future, someone came back, and then reproduced it, and, and who knows. Yeah, and now we're just getting copies all over the place. <laughs> all right. How are we on time? Um, we have All right, we have 11 minutes, minutes for questions. Uh, I was gonna go over repairability real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. We're not ready for questions yet. <laughs> okay, so how does this compare to the Swagway? Would you say it's exactly on par? This is the same. Okay. Yep. Excellent, well, then we can recycle our eight out of 10 repairability score, and eight is a pretty great score. Um, old Android phones used to get eights because you remember you used to be able to take the back off your phone and then the battery out of your phone, 
And it was like, wow, really cool. Anyway, that was an awesome feature that we really like and want to bring back. Um, the uh, Swagway is on par with a phone, which is weird to say, uh, but mostly uses like standard fasteners, not too much glue. Everything's pretty distinct and fairly modular. You don't have like a whole string of everything's one component and it's all soldered together. Um, so all things considered, eight out of 10, not bad. And now, yeah, if we could get people questions, yeah, question. that'd be awesome. It sounds like they're mistaken. I don't think this would work with a. Yeah, okay, so he's saying that there was a podcast where somebody thought that a company in China was able to replace the gyroscope with a mechanical switch, and that's why these are prevalent and why they're so successful. And I think that's probably not true. I think that's a confused rumor because there is a gyroscope that we identified on this board and the, and the other one that we took apart. And having ridden one for about 30 seconds before I decided that was enough. Uh, there's definitely uh, an analog uh, adjustment to the motor. It's not a binary like go forward, turn motor on, full forward. So, right, yeah. I, With the uh, the switch that was used to yeah, there there is a switch which is fell off. in my opinion just a dead man switch. This just lets you know if it's lets the board know if you're on it and really doesn't have anything to do with which direction or how fast you're going. Any other questions? If you guys just want to come up and look, I guess that's perfectly Yeah, if there aren't useful. any questions, then <laughs> we'll pretty much end the panel, but you can come up and I'll leave things here and answer questions in person. And thank you guys for your attention.